Hey guys, welcome back to my old tractor shed. Um, taking the left hand side of the brake apart today and just a few extra linkages and one extra bolt, not 100% sure. Had a quick look at the picture, there's a, like a two piece shaft in there of some sort. So we've got one extra bolt there, but I think the rest of that's gonna come off the same. Um, this parking brake mechanism is the only part that's real different. I've been puttering away at it for a few minutes, getting the cotter pins out. Nothing overly difficult about cotter pins, just gotta hold your tongue right and curse and swear a little bit. They're always rusted and seized. I usually find it easier on the little ones, especially really old ones, is cut the eye off or the head or whatever you want to call it and then get a hold of the tail end and you pull one in piece out at a time. It pretty much works okay. This one here sees pretty good. I got the cotter pin out of the back. Um, I was trying to grab a hold of this with the vice grips and pull it out, didn't want to go. What I ended up doing is taking a punch and put it in behind and then just, just tap it in. Um, it's moving it now, but what it did is it brought the whole thing over and then I was able just to hit the shaft, uh, the, the arm, and popped it free. Um, you see, they're not usually too difficult, just put some penetrating oil on them and play with them for a while. Usually get them, well, that's going to fall right off on me. There. Um, I'm going to take this off as an assembly and then I'll... Uh, dismantle it and clean it up a little wee bit better later. Um, yeah. All right, so we got this great big cotter pin out of here. Clearly, someone, someone's had this apart at one time. I can't see the factory putting in a cotter pin that big. On these big ones, lots of times what I'll do is I'll just grab the head. This one looks like it's gonna come anyway. And then just tap the uh, side cutters with a hammer. Hmm. Looks like hmm. that whole shaft is rotating. Let's have a look down in there. You can't see it. it should be right there. Yeah. That shaft doesn't go all the way through. I'm reaching down in there and I can feel, I can feel a bulb on the, the casting. That's odd. I wouldn't have expected that to turn. Yeah, it definitely doesn't come through and I don't feel any locking screw or anything. That's very interesting. I would have thought, because I had a cotter pin there, that this would have come off. I gotta get a, a wire brush and clean this up. Joy juice. Probably should get a puller. Just not much room on the back to get uh, one of these hooks over the top. I can get it okay, but uh, yeah, not ideal. Um, that shaft is rotating in there. It may all just come off and then I could sort out how to get it off all apart later. Yeah, I gotta get that pin out of there. That's okay. That pin, pin was just seized in there too tight, broke that little piece off. 
That's why we own a welder. All right, I think that's what I'm gonna try and do. Because I can see it moving when I pull this in and out. It's moving pretty free there, which... Puzzled by that. But that's okay. Now, one of these sockets fits this. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna take that center one out first. I don't really know what that does. I'm missing the top two, but those three are the same. They, I'll check them later, but they look like they're the same as the ones on the other side. All right, yesterday I had an issue because it was binding on there. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Um, yeah, I have to split it between here. Pretty easy, maybe. This is the, oh, I'll get some pictures of that later. This is the, your posi track, locks the div, but that's not attached to this. That goes to a mechanism there. Let's make sure these aren't caught on anything. Leave that hang there for now. Again, dowel. I can see the dowel right here. And there it is. Same as yesterday. We'll take her over to the table, tear it all apart, clean it all up. Stay tuned. All right, when the house had some lunch, had a cup of coffee, time to tear this thing apart. Give it a little bit of thought. I think pretty obvious what's happened is um, this arm here, it's got a grease fitting. It should be pivoting on this shaft and it's not. And what's happened is it seized and then the shaft was actually pivoting in that housing. That's a bit of an issue. Um, my initial thought was, of course, a couple center punch marks on the shaft to try and swell it up. But I have a neighbor that's a machinist. He's away on holidays right now. But when he gets back, I'm going to see if maybe we can maybe knurl that or something to expand it so that it fits tight in there. But I'll have to figure that out later. Taking a few photographs again, as I always do. I got a buggered up cotter pin there. And, and uh, we're going to get that off first and get this piece that I broke off. That just threads off there. I'm not too concerned about that. Actually, I'm pretty sure I can just weld it. But I can probably just find a, a, a different end for that. But anyway, let's see if we can't get this thing to our part. That is pretty snug in there as well. Um, that's an easy thing to fix. If I break this cast arm, well, that's not gonna be an easy thing to fix. So I think we're going to put, penetrating oil all over this, but I think I'm gonna put a little wee bit of heat on that. I don't wanna take a chance in breaking this, uh, this other housing there. Give me a second. Penetrating oil is good, but heat's better. Okay, gotta be careful now. Well, let's see if we can get this one off. This one's been off at one time. It's got a great big long cotter pin there. At least it's not seized. Well, the cotter pin wasn't seized. The 
the pin seized in that little yoke or whatever you want to call that. Same as the one on this end. So before I break that one, I'm going to put a little bit of heat on there as well. enough. Big heavy cotter pin there, and then I think I can get then I can get that whole shaft out probably, and then uh, yeah, this one's free. Okay, let's just take that cotter pin and see, see what happens. Okay, now I have to disassemble all that, free that up. I'm gonna free up that parking brake. Something needing repair there. Um, I think this one, I'm gonna try and take it apart proper. I'm gonna take that threaded piece off so that I can lift out that mechanism on the inside. Let's have a look at this. corruption inside this one it's uh, a whole lot there a whole lot dirtier I'll have to think about those discs a little bit perhaps but this should lift
the right wrench here. Okay, 11 sixteenths. I'm gonna get a socket and then I'm gonna get some heat on that. That's how I took the other one apart. She comes. That's why they call it joy juice. It's a joy when it comes off. Okay, that's not hot. Okay. Oh boy, get, the, get this all cleaned up, painted. It's gonna be a challenge to put it all back together. You know, it's nice when you take something apart, you can see all the marks where everything was, but once you clean it and paint it, those marks are gone. <laughs> You're on your own. Okay, I gotta put some marks here so I know which side's up. I really don't think it matters after going through that one. But nevertheless, I put a mark on the top, so when I put it all back together, it makes it easy. This brake's been dragging. This is uh, it's blue in here. Probably, possibly because that was seized. I'm going to have to have a closer look, but yeah, these discs don't look like they have as much meat. I'll have to pull those out and have a closer look. Um, yeah. Okay. I think the way I took that other one apart yesterday, is this was all busted. I don't think I have to do that. I think I can get this out. Hope I can get this out. Yes. Comes out that way. This is right full of. This, this, this one's broken as well. It's it's split in the same spot. And this disc here is kaput. There's no lining left. That's probably what a lot of this this crud I'm seeing in here is. Yeah, this is this is piece of, of lining. Well. All right, I did spend a little time yesterday afternoon. I didn't come back out looking online. These parts are all obsolete. I have John Deere part numbers for them. Everything's obsolete. I have a sneaky suspicion though. Um, some of these will probably be same. Maybe if a couple tractor models newer. All right, guys, I've got everything cleaned up. Uh, I was watching the video I shot yesterday and I realized this video is running a little long. So time to pull the pin. A uh, couple things that finally clued in. Uh, when I was power washing the tractor, I had noticed that this brake housing was discolored, but of course it didn't clue in. Well, now we obviously know why that's discolored. That thing got hot. Um, leave me a comment. What do you think? Was it the seized up shaft that did that damage, or did the operator at some point forget the parking brake was on? Um, yeah, either way, damage is done. I need to fix it. Uh, we'll get to that later. Uh, so yeah, I think we're going to end this video here. Uh, if you enjoy hanging out in the shop with me, if you haven't done it already, click that subscribe and little bell so you know when I post a new video. If you want to help me and my little channel out, share it with anybody you think might be interested. Uh, click the like, leave a comment. Particularly, what do you think caused the damage on this one? And I uh, appreciate your time. Thanks for hanging out with me. We'll see you next time in my old tractor shed. See ya!